What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update and just celebrating here because we got amazing news with the approval of multiple spot Ethereum ETFs. This is a great thing for the entire crypto asset class. They didn't just approve Van Eck with its deadline yesterday. They actually allowed eight issuers approving BlackRock, Fidelity, and more. Now, we know BlackRock's deadline wasn't until August, and they approved it even sooner. And I personally didn't think they were going to deny BlackRock because they have very high approval ratings. Now, what's important to note is this is huge for paving the way for the altcoin market. We know Bitcoin is king, but Ethereum is the number one smart contract platform. It has never reached $1 trillion in market cap. This is setting the stage for Solana ETFs, XRP ETFs, and other top assets. So this news is amazing, but there's still some regulatory ambiguity taking place. We know that Bitcoin is somewhat considered to be a commodity, and the SEC has never really said, per se, if Ethereum is a security. But this approval for eight different issuers, including BlackRock and Fidelity, is a really good thing. So we know when the Bitcoin spy ETFs were first approved, Bitcoin actually crashed for a few weeks, but the end result was an all-time high price. And it later saw in just quarter one over $12 billion in net inflow, so we crashed for a few weeks and ended up at an all-time high price. And thinking about the big picture and understanding what ETFs are plugging into traditional finance, I don't think the inflows are done for Bitcoin. So for Bitcoin in quarter one, we had just over 12 billion in net inflows, but the predictions long term are really high. And just thinking about 10 billion, 50 billion, or hundreds of billions of dollars in the future for Bitcoin or other all ETFs is exciting. And what I want to point out again, because this is really important, is looking at the Ethereum weekly price chart. So last cycle right here during the week of December 14th is when Bitcoin drew its first major move in all time highs going well past that previous cycle top at the 20k zone. So Bitcoin led the way, and about 49 days later, we'll just say two months later, Ethereum then went to all-time highs. Now what's crazy is that last cycle, when Bitcoin was at an all-time high price, Ethereum was still about 150% away from its all-time high. In this cycle, although we haven't seen Bitcoin go to 80k or 100k, we're still about 30% away from an all-time high. And now considering what the approval of the spot Ethereum ETFs could mean long term for Ethereum, knowing we're 30% away from all time high rather than 150%, I'm even more excited. Ethereum is roughly three times smaller than Bitcoin, so billions of dollars have a much bigger effect percentage wise. And looking at the crypto total market cap, we can see our last wick did backtest the 21 week EMA similar to past cycles. And looking at the Bitcoin monthly price chart, looking at the last three cycles for major moves in all time highs. Considering the monthly RSI is still below previous levels below 70 during the last three cycles we got up to 90 and Bitcoin did a major run. If we don't see Bitcoin go on a major move in all time highs with Ethereum doing major moves in all time highs along with the total crypto asset class creating new all time highs within the next 12 months I'll be shocked. And this is another big reason why I've been pointing this out all year is the importance of staying above the 21 week EMA. So we've seen wicks below this level before but for the most part maintaining candle bodies and that recent pullback we're still holding above. And same thing for the total crypto market cap, we have this wick right there. We also have total two right here, this is excluding Bitcoin, we have wicks holding this level. And then going to total three similar setup, so holding above this level. So comparing the previous cycles, that's something I want to see holding the uptrend above the 21 week EMA and the 8 month EMA. Because historically on the Bitcoin weekly price chart with over 10 years of price history, as long as we're holding the trend above the 21 week EMA, we're chilling. Alright, we're going to dive into some recent news, but first I want to cover this post by Galgatron. Today is one of the best days in crypto history. The walls are finally crumbling because you, all of you, demanded something better. The incumbents tried their best to own it, but decentralization beat them in the end. It's time to feast on the incumbents, show no mercy. I love that. Tell me that doesn't give you goosebumps. Next up, shared by Good Morning Crypto, just in, Standard Chartered Bank predicts XRP ETF approval by 2025. I love nothing more than the approval of an XRP spot ETF this year. It would shock everybody. I've listened to the commentary by Brad Garlinghouse. It sounds like it's just a matter of time. The biggest concern is just the ongoing lawsuit and there's still a bunch of unknown variables and it seems the majority of the market is expecting the Solana spot ETF to be approved next. And now that the Ether spot ETFs have been approved, we're likely going to see more Ether spot ETFs followed by more assets later. We have to remember that the net inflows for Bitcoin are most likely not done being the largest asset, the biggest store of value narrative in history, followed by Ethereum. So it definitely wouldn't surprise me to see Solana being next, being a top 5 asset, but I'm watching other assets including XRP, Cardano, AVAX, Polkadot, because I go back to the commentary of Robert Michnik, head of BlackRock, and he basically said, I shared a clip, I think he said about 3 investable assets for potential spot ETFs. We also had Brad Garlinghouse sharing this yesterday, and remember, he made a prediction for 2024 for the crypto asset class to reach $5 trillion. 
For whatever reasons, I've been hanging on to this one for a while, probably my all-time favorite from the XRP community. It's been hanging on a wall in my house, but with all this momentum in the market, I wanted to share it. Laugh now, but one day, XRP will power the world. So take from that what you will, is he full of it, does he just strongly believe in it, or does he know something we don't? I know many of us believe that a regulatory based bull run would be the biggest bull run in history. We are seeing stablecoin regulation, we are seeing enterprise DeFi regulation, KYC frameworks, all types of things. I saw Anders reposting this of Yahoo Finance with Anthony Scaramucci with a great point of presidents being anti-crypto or pro-crypto. Regarding the upcoming elections, they're not going to lose any votes being pro-crypto, but they might lose some votes particularly from younger people being anti-crypto. The craziest thing about the crypto asset class is when you observe the behavior of retail sentiment every single cycle, when prices go up, they're paying attention, and it has a very powerful flywheel effect. When new investors join and they make their first 5 to 10x, they're not looking back. And then we get the usual multi-year bear market, crypto is crashing, multiple black swans, crypto is a scam, until the next cycle. And this is at least what we've witnessed over the past 10 plus years. When the market goes up and there's days where alts are up 20%, 40%, everybody's going to come back, they're going to pay attention and go, what's going on? Why is this pumping? And during the weeks and months when we're trendless or just crashing down, it's boring and there's substantially less interest. But the one thing I believe is that both euphoria and excitement always eventually return. Next up, for XRP shared by Rath Kahneman, we have Coinmetrics is reinstating XRP in this index, the CMBI 10 index. They've reviewed and determined that XRP meets all investability criteria outlined in their multi-asset methodology. As a result, XRP will be reinstated in this index effective in the June index review. So first Coinbase and now this. And right here this person asks, what is this index? And we can see right here by Rath. This index is a benchmark tracking a basket of the 10 largest tokens based on their projected 10-year future market capitalization, a kind of large cap crypto index. We have shared by Bank XRP, XRP Ledger achieves 88 million ledgers milestones. So keep in mind that there are multiple transactions in a single ledger. So we did cross more transactions than Ethereum at just over 2.5 billion. And last but not least, guys, and this is the most important, I know that sentiment is very low for the few people watching this. But if you are watching this, I greatly appreciate it. So I want to do everything I can to get more users in the crypto space. I've shared before these stats and the projections for global crypto users to even reach 1 billion users similar to the trajectory of the internet. We shared stats before of cloud and how long it took them to get 1 billion users. Same thing with Linux. And this is no different. The crypto asset class will reach over 1 billion global crypto users. And of course, each cycle's bull run that we've seen in 2013, 2017, and 2021, it attracted tons of attention and excitement on its own. But I know that even in a boring market, we can make a difference today. So how can we reach 1 billion users faster by all of us coming together and doing our part? And imagine if each one of us just onboarded five new people into Web3, friends and family, and it could be really simple. It could be as easy as having each person just buy $10 of crypto on an exchange, downloading something simple like Coinbase, or maybe creating a wallet and understanding how to store your private keys. Or just sending them basic websites like CoinMarketCap.com or CoinGecko. They can look at assets, they see the prices, the market cap. It links right to the website if they want to learn more. It's all about keeping it extremely simple with small amounts just to introduce them to the crypto asset class. The goal is bringing more users. It doesn't have to be complex, leveraging a dApp. It doesn't have to be adding networks on MetaMask. It can be if they're excited and they want to learn more. But the ramifications are huge and the multiplier effects of each one of us just onboarding five new people into crypto is huge. And just that alone could bring millions of new users into the crypto space sooner before a big bull run. And it's not about all of them even being interested in crypto or being here for the long term, but it's about just introducing them so they're more aware of crypto. And I'll be introducing new people into this asset class every chance I get, and I have been, and we can make a difference today. The future is in our hands, not the government's, and we're stronger together. And I know many of us have already introduced a bunch of people in this space, and I'll keep doing it, because the more that they dive in, some of them are going to be excited and they'll want to learn more about that technology itself and its benefits. And I'm not talking about convincing people to invest large sums of money into crypto if they're not experienced. I think it's important just to have $10 in the market, get the smallest amount of skin in the game, and just watch how prices fluctuate. And the more that they play with it, they're going to look into DeFi, they're going to find exciting things about yield, they're going to understand how efficient it is to transact money without a middleman. And they might even thank you for it, and I can't tell you how many people reached out to me in 2021 after the biggest moves already happened. They weren't positioned. So just like Galgatron said in that tweet that I read, we are beating the incumbents and we can do this together. A huge thank you to all that like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.
If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.